Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, he named who and a stain who and a stuffer who and up in Obihi when at a wakalu alay. When I would be la him in Shururi and Fusina, whom in say Ati Amalina, may Yati Hillah who fell out with Illa, who may you the Lil who fell out hard yella. When I shadow a laila, Hail Allah, who was the Hula Sharikala. When I shadow and say then our Mola and Muhammad and Abduhu were a Sulu. A mad. فقال قال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم قال رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أدين النصيحة صرك الله صرك رسوله النبي الكريم Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given this great gift of la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to each and every one of us. Alhamdulillah, myself, I consider myself to be very fortunate in the, uh, as was said by our MC today, I was born as a non-Muslim for the first 17 years of my life. The words Christianity and religion might as well have been synonymous with one another. So if I may, let me wind the clock back to the time when it all began. I was born into a Protestant household. My mother was Protestant, my dad and my sister were and are atheists. And I was brought up with this, and even at school you could describe me as a happy, clappy Christian. We would have a, a club called The Ark, and I would watch those evangelical Christian videos and all of these sorts of things, all of these activities. I explain this because it's important when you talk about a journey to Islam, a journey from dar darkness to light, when we talk about this, that you understand from where to where, from where I have come to where I have now reached. So Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala delivered me from this situation. And it was at a school for the blind, which was in Worcester, because I was partially sighted from birth, but then I became blind at the age of 14. So I travelled and stayed at this boarding school. I was born originally in Bournemouth, but went to Worcester. And from the ages of 12 to 18, I was studying there. Now for my A-levels, this is where I read about Islam. And I wasn't receiving dawah from anybody. I never received dawah uh, from a website or from a dawah table or even from friends towards Islam. It happened by me reading my RE classes at A-level about Islam. Now I was searching for dunya, I was searching for examination grades so that I could go to university, so I could get enough UCAS points, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose this to be the medium for me to have something rather better. SubhanAllah, the course was not even going to go ahead in the first place. The course, at the RE at A level, it was only going to be, going to be running at, at AS level. If that had been the case, then I would not have had enough full A-levels to go to the universities that I was looking for. So, I would have not taken this, I would have taken English or chemistry or something else. Now, instead, or even on that first day, the people for, uh, at, in charge, for whatever reason, they changed their mind. So, for this reason, I was able to take the course. Now, after that, we had to decide, besides Thomas Aquinas and Aristotle and Kant and all these other philosophers who are famous and well-known, we had to study another religion. So, I had, to, I had to choose between Judaism or Islam. And I, by an irony, I chose Judaism. But the rest of the class outvoted me in that. And I was the one, ironically, I was the one who, who reverted to Islam in the end. But at the start, they were the ones that chose Islam, and I was the one who, who wanted to do something else. Because I saw Judaism as, as marginally less boring, a'udhu billah, and backwards than Islam. This is how I saw Islam. This is how so many people, as we know in this world today, uh, especially in the West, see the religion of Islam. Because they are not educated about Islam. And for myself, I never saw the, the, the choice of religion as a multiple choice question. I saw it as just Christianity or atheism. But when I got to read about Islam, then all of that changed. So I was reading about Tawheed, 
I was reading about Risalat, and I thought, was, was it really necessary that Isa alayhi salam had to be the son of God? And then I read about Risalat and I thought, is it really possible that this person, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, could have led this incredible life? And I was only reading sketchy details. But is it possible that he could have led that life and inspired so many people and not been a prophet of Allah? And I, I really th felt that there was something special about Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we also read from the Quran. And if you've ever read from the Bible in uh, classes at school or anywhere else, then you'll know there is a differentiation in tone between the Quran and the Bible. The Bible, and you don't need to even explain this to somebody who is not a Muslim. They, they will know whether, they, whether, whether Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put it in their hearts to be able to admit it or not. That's a different matter. But when you have the Bible in front of you, you're reading stories of apostles. You're reading essentially a hadith of those times. If I can put it in the, those crude terms of calling it a hadith. But a hadith of the disciples of Jesus alayhi salam. So I read the words, literally the words of Allah in the Quran and I saw that this was something special and also the unambiguous terms of, of the Quran contrasts starkly with the vague terms in the Bible. Now let me give one example of this. In the time, end of times, it is described in the Bible that seven bowls of anger will be thrown down onto the earth and the four horsemen of the apocalypse and so on and so forth and ambiguous terms which people cannot understand and cannot uh, fathom what the meaning of this is but we are getting complete descriptions in the Quran we are hearing about the oceans boiling we're hearing about the in the 17th Sipari it says that the earth is rocked like a boat at sea etc all of this we hear and this is uh, these are vivid descriptions so all of this led me towards uh, thinking that the Qur'an was the, the book of God. I said my shahada in front of a smattering of, of non-Muslim witnesses. There was one Muslim, I didn't even know that you had to have two Muslim witnesses. But I was frightened to get, out of, get it out of the way to say my shahada, because uh, I felt conspicuous as so many people did, do. But they were sitting around in the gathering saying, I believe this and I believe that. And I was, I'd been asking Allah to Allah beforehand. Uh, in the weeks before that, please Allah show me an opportunity where I can, I can show, I, I can uh, say my shahada. So I took this as my, reluctantly my op opportunity and I said, Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah. In fact, I said, I believe that there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. I didn't even know the Arabic. You may be wondering, what about my parents? Yes, they were shocked. They were, uh, they were upset and they were expecting this to be some sort of fad. So some sort of thing which was going to be blowing over but as time went on they realized that no this was not the case and it was one bombshell after another I even felt sorry for them you know one day I would be coming in and, and telling them that I wanted to uh, you know, I, I, I was a Muslim first of all then the next I was telling them after my studies in university that I was going to be going away and studying the Quran uh, at a madrasa and then, then when they saw these clothes that I'm wearing now and every, all of these, it was one bombshell after another. Now the, as far as Ilm goes, I was at university in Southampton and this is, a, 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 is, this is to say that I met some friends whilst I was studying maths there, a course which I completed but uh, Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let me meet two people who were thinking of doing Ilm themselves. Now I was inspired, I after my course went away I went and looked for opportunities elsewhere. Firstly in the secular field, uh, the secular universities in this country and that had its problems and complications. So I looked around North Africa when I realized what a madrasa really is. And I looked around North Africa and I looked around the Middle East and etc. I didn't actually physically go to these places but I was applying to them but these places were not replying. And there was a, a great wisdom from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this. And the, re the reason is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted something better for me. But I, did, I wasn't to know that at the time. And for nine months I was looking for a madrasa where I was able to, to study. And I was on the point of giving up by March 2007. Then I made a fateful phone call via the embassy in South, the South African embassy to Madrasa Tunur, Nil Magfufin. I'd called up Mulana Hassan Murchi Sab and I asked him, 
Is it possible for me to be able to study an Alim course? He said, yes, it was. This was a course which was, as has been explained, it's in English, but the books are in Arabic, so that's uh, compliant with what's possible for me and, uh, and easier than if I was going away into, say, the subcontinent and studying in a, in a different language. I was able to study in a way, most importantly of all, in the language of Braille. Now, I'll take this opportunity, if I may, for one minute. Uh, Malana Umar has read to you, but I shall read to you from the Mas'haf itself. Braille is a unique language. Braille is a language of six dots in one cell, meaning one letter. So you'll have one, two, three, four, five, six. And I will allow the, I, I'm sorry to the sisters who are, who are not able to see uh, my reading of this now, but they will be able to, inshallah, we can pass this upstairs maybe later. You will be able to come and look at this Quran later if you wish, inshallah. I shall read, I shall read from Surah Baqarah, inshallah. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألف لام ميم ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين الذين يؤمنون بالغيب ويقيمون الصلاة ومن رزقناهم ينفقون والذين يؤمنون بما أنزل إليك وما أنزل من قبلك وبالآخرة هم يوقنون أولئك على هدى من ربهم وأولئك هم المفلحون صدق الله العظيم this is not the only method by which a blind person can learn. In past ages, great shaykh did learn great amounts of ilm and have made huge contributions. For instance, Ibn Masha, his ustads, his ustads, they narrate that he would never forget something once it entered his brain. This is the sort of dedication he had to ilm and the sort of fazail we can link to his life. Uh, so many shaykh, uh, and we now see from amongst us that in this current generation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the ability not only to learn and memorize the ilm, but to be able to refer back to it. Every book right up to Bukhari. I mean, I've shown you this Quran here. This is only one volume of the Quran. This is five powders. Six of this will make one Quran. Uh, will make one Quran. You'll have 32 of these to make one Bukhari. But all of this, a, a blind person can refer back to. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the ability. The computer will give us the... Uh, the ability to access even more ilm. Malana Umar has said that we would record our classes and listen back to them at nights and weekends. We'd also uh, have soft copy books on our computers. We have a mechanical voice which sounds somewhat like Stephen Hawkins, if you imagine that. And a person can read both in English and Arabic, because now there is an Arabic version as well. And we can also uh, we can also type and use the internet and all these mediums can be used. A person, you will imagine in a madrasa, you will imagine the blackboard and writing on the blackboard. In our madrasa, people will study, they'll have the braille version in front of them, and then the sheikh will be sitting in front of them at the desk, and they'll read their sighted version, and the two will go hand in hand. So this is how it's possible for people in the current age to read and study. And almost all of this, which you will learned in a, in a current Darul for the sighted, we will learn in the Darul for the blind. Alhamdulillah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken me from the point where I didn't even think I could, if I embraced Islam, I would be able to perform one salawat, one salah, or do one fast, to the point where he has taken me for Hajj, for Umrah, and this last year to see Masjid al-Aqsa as well, and to do the six years uh, and complete my, uh, my Dawa al studies, including Tensi powders of the Quran, Alhamdulillah. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he enables us to start a madrasa as the efforts are now being made over in this country and that much work is taken not only teaching the blind but the sighted from myself and Malana Umar. Jazakallah khair for listening wa akhiru da'an wa'ana anil hamdulillahi rabbil